Hello, this is Rosie and I'm back again with another girl takeover for the position of the British Ambassador Dominic Williams. Um, it is the second year that you gave over your position to a very young and dynamic girl, isn't it Mr. Williams? Yeah, that's right. So last year we had Pieri and this year we have Marisa who's been the Ambassador for all of today. <laughs> yeah, and how is it different from the previous year? Well, I think I mean, there's lots of things that are the same because the purpose, it really is to give Marisa the full experience of being British ambassador for the day. So we've been going all over Phnom Penh, doing various different meetings and different activities. But one of the great things about the girls' takeover is we do try and shape it to the interests of uh, the girl who takes the role. And so Marisa is an international relations student. She's got an interest in diplomacy. So this year we've done a bit more of a focus on international relations. We had a very good discussion at the foreign ministry this morning, which was something we didn't do last year because Piri's interest was in climate change. So instead we met with UNDP to talk about the global climate crisis. Um, and then also we've done, you know, decided to do some new fun elements this, uh, this afternoon. So uh, P uh, Marisa and I cooked together this afternoon, for example, and hopefully some of you will get a chance to see that video later. Yeah, yeah. So the girl have different interests. So this year uh, she's more interested in the international affairs. So and we have Marisa as an international student, uh, very ambitious about security and the, the policy. So. Maybe can you share with us what I like? What did you do today with Mr. Okay. Ambassador? So thank you for the questions. Um, well, today is quite a long day for me. Mm. Uh, it's not like my routine to uh, go from one place to place. But uh, for girl takeover today, um, I start with um, come to embassy mm. and uh, discuss and have a meeting a small meeting with each team and as well as uh, we went to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to yeah. discuss about the uh, situation with uh, UK and Cambodia relations. After that we moved to the lunch meeting, right? Yes, uh, the lunch meeting with uh, young, no, sorry, with the woman leader. Mm -hmm. Like we discussed a lot, we discussed about motherhood, we discussed about uh, partner we discuss about challenging barrier and we discuss about many things like there's a lot of things we talking talk about and after that we come back to the resident and we do a cooking show <laughs> which is fun delight and interesting for me because uh, we cook together after cooking show we have another meeting with CSO uh, inclusive for specifics and currently I'm um, do interview <laughs> yes. a very long day yes. and, and it's not a usual day for you right um, going around from one meeting to an, another meeting well it's not my routine schedule what i have been lining up it's it's three meeting in a row yeah. in the same day so it's quite a lot but i enjoy mm -hmm. since so, uh, i gain many experience and knowledge about that as well yeah. thank you and have you ever taken any leadership role uh, before joining this school takeover program? Well, unfortunately, no. This is my first one. And the first start is always uh, pushing me out for more. So I hopefully can find more in the future. Yeah, yeah. And how does girl takeover program like take you another step further like to raise your support for women and girls in Cambodia? Um, well, I believe that uh, this platform is the best thing that could happen to the girl. Firstly, uh, as myself, we, uh, I am the representation of the girl from everywhere. Uh, I believe that the Girl Takeover program can lead to more understanding, spreading awareness to all the girls out there if they have any problem, if they are facing any issues regarding with uh, many uh, issues out there. So I think that this is the goal spreading awareness and they also can take a look of the uh, situation like me when I um, take over the ambassador for a day, how tight his schedule is and how uh, exciting it is at the same time. So I hope that's answer your question. Yeah, now that she learned that your schedule is, is very tight, <laughs> so like, do you really enjoy your tight schedule doing that every single day? So, I mean, I have a lot of appetite for work, so I do, I do really enjoy getting out and about. And I mean, for me, the important thing is your day can be busy, but as long as you've got a variety of activities, that helps keep you going. So sometimes it might be a meeting with just one person and then you can have quite a detailed conversation. Other times it might be with a group of people, it's more interactive. Sometimes we might you know, do an activity 
activity like yeah. we did the cooking today. So they're not, although it's busy, it's a different set of activities. So that sort of helps keep your energy level up. I think if you're doing the same thing all day, yeah. like in one very long meeting the whole day, that's difficult. But as long as I've got some variety, then I do really enjoy it. Yeah. And and as I and I and as I know that like you have been working a lot to empower women in Cambodia. So as an ambassador, having lived in Cambodia for more than two years, I suppose, uh, what do you see are the challenges facing Cambodian uh, women that you like to address and take the action in order to help uh, mm. address these issues? Well, I mean, the first thing I would say is that there are loads of really impressive women in Cambodia. Like from when I've been traveling around the country, I quite often go to schools and I've met schoolgirls who are confident, their English is fantastic, who ask me really interesting questions. I see women in business doing fantastic things right across the country, particularly in small and medium businesses. And then you've got some really impressive women in leadership positions too. So, I mean, that women are doing great things here already. I think there are some specific issues that affect women more than men in Cambodia. I would like to see more women at the very top levels of leadership. There aren't enough women, in my view, in Parliament or in ministerial positions. So I'd like to see more there. Uh, there aren't enough women in national businesses in senior leadership roles. There's, they're very, very strongly represented in SMEs, but in the big businesses, there aren't as many. And then there are challenges that face women and girls across the country. So the gender-based violence is, is, a, is a really important issue that needs specific action to tackle. Um, and there are other issues that sort of face young girls who aren't able to attend school. So thinking about how we can make sure that women have the same opportunities that men do. Um, and we try and do this through our programs of making sure that all of the development programs we do have a gender angle that makes sure we think about how to include women and give them opportunities. We support some of the work against gender-based violence. But the thing that I would say that is really important is actually, you know, Things like Girls Takeover help Cambodian women realize that because the, the, the women here have the capacity, they have the capability, you have smart women here, uh, and sometimes they're just told by people around them that they can't do something. Seeing people like Marissa come and be British ambassador for the day tells them they can. There is no role that is off limits for a woman. They can be any position they want in this country. And I hope that the, uh, initiatives like today really encourage young girls to say, I'm going to do that in future. Yeah. And for Marisa, before you applied for the Girl Takeover program, like, did you have the confidence that you could really do it? Um, thank you for the question. And no, I don't. Unfortunately, <laughs> I don't. Because uh, I believe that this is the big step as well. Yeah. And I um, never thought that I could stand here mm -hmm. and represent most of the girls. Uh, because this program is really big for uh, the reputation itself and yeah but uh, right now I'm here and talking to everyone and as well as um, one more thing is um, when they sent us the agenda I thought that oh I cannot do it because I'm going to have media interview but currently I'm yeah <laughs> doing, doing the interview it now. yes <laughs> so it's quite a challenging situations but it's also pushing me out of my comfort zone to make me realize that, oh, I can do anything if I want to, that, that's it. Yeah. Okay. And for the girls' empowerment, what do you want to do for uh, women and girls in the home? Um, so basically because I have a strong interest in feminism mm -hmm. and uh, girl empower uh, women empowerment, yeah. as well as youth empowerment themselves. Um, I believe that uh, after this program, because I'm currently joining this program, after this program, I will be uh, useful resources to all the girls who are interested in this program as well. Because uh, when I post my pre video um, yeah. on the Plan uh, International Facebook page, I got a lot of message from a uh, young girl who I knew or I might not know. Uh, they said that, oh, hi, Pong, uh, could you give me some advice on this? Uh, on this program, how can I apply it, and any suggestion and idea, and uh, this is kind of first step that I can talk because the first um, because of I can give them an advice mm -hmm. and uh, tell them what should they do in the process of um, applying for this, and as well as I'm planning on spreading this awareness, mm -hmm. or when I'm go to have a workshop, or uh, maybe around November. Uh, it's about gender equality and gender-based violence. So I hope this can be uh, one of the 
like a superhero moment that uh, I told uh, some girl that, oh, I joined this program and it's really helpful for me. And you should too, because uh, the sky is the, the limit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, we can say that girls now, they are very enthusiastic in taking yeah. any opportunities. But the problem is that they don't really have the guidance or uh, what do you say about it? Um, I believe that if it in the city, mm -hmm. in the center of city, most of them might be uh, don't have the confidence. Mm -hmm. Not they have the access to that situation, but they don't have the confidence. Like me before I apply for this program, I don't have the confidence. It's the really tough job to take over the big position. But uh, for the girl in the rural area or in the province, most of them are afraid that they are not good enough, they're not perfect for this role, or they may or may not um, can get more access to the information because the lack of experience in using digital platform or uh, limit education in the first place. So to Mr. Ambassador, as you mentioned that uh, women's empowerment now has been done with a great job but there are still gaps that we need to address so do you think that Cambodia has done enough in order to help uh, empower and encourage girls especially those in rural areas so I mean I think there there's a lot of initiatives that are happening yeah. but I think there's still more that need to be done in rural areas particularly to ensure that girls can access education so I went to Ratnakiri earlier this mm. year and I remember talking to one of the communities there and one of the things that they said had made a really big difference to them was the building of a middle school closer to their community because actually there was concern about the safety of girls traveling I think it was about seven kilometers to the local high school and um, that kept families away that prevented them from sending their children mm -hmm. and I I think across the country there can be different issues that keep girls out of school. Some of them are cultural attitudes that, that need to change. The idea that you know that only it's only worth sending the male child for an education and that the girl child should stay at home and do housework. Those kind of attitudes need to be tackled through initiatives at the local level that help raise awareness and help people understand that you know boys and girls actually have the same potential, can contribute to society in exactly the same ways. Yeah. Um, but then there are other issues like um, you know making sure there are feminine hygiene products at school because again we hear quite often that girls miss school uh, when they have their periods because they don't have those products and they're embarrassed and they're shame and their families keep them back. So there's a, quite a lot of different issues across the country and I've seen fantastic initiatives that are happening in many, many places. But still, I think there's more that can be done to make sure that girls get that education, which is the first step to enabling them to, yeah. to build a brighter future for themselves. Yeah, and as you mentioned, um, there are a cultural norm in rural areas that girls have to take this role or boys have to go to school. And I know that it is hard to really switch the mindset of those in that areas or Cambodian people in some parts. Mm. So would you suggest any tips or maybe the things that we can take in order to help switch that mindset and then really help girls to go to school and get education that they deserve? I mean, I'm personally a really big believer that the examples that yeah. people can see around them is what makes the biggest difference. Because if there is visibility of women contributing to society, taking on leadership positions, making an impact, then that, I think, helps people understand the potential. Yeah. And I think the more people at the community level can see examples around them of other families where the women are earning an income and supporting their families because they've had an education that has enabled them to access better a better yeah. livelihood, then those kind of examples are really powerful. And then again, seeing people at the sort of national level, you know, when they turn on the TV news to see women being the ones speaking about the issues of importance of the day, or, you know, women being celebrated for the achievements that they're making in sport, in culture, in business, in all the different sectors. I think those are things that are really powerful in changing attitudes, but it does, it does take time. And I think things like, you know, I know there will be, and as Marisa has said already, you know, there are girls in Cambodia in the rural areas who look look up to her, looking yeah, at what yeah. she's achieving. And the fact that she's done this means that some of those will think, I can do this too. So we just need more people like Marissa. That's my basic answer. Yeah, she can <laughs> use the voice for all the girls and help encourage them to really take this step up. So uh, Mr. Uh, Williams, yes. uh, in the UK, I just wonder like how much uh, women and girls in the UK are being empowered and encouraged compared to women in Cambodia. 
So we've come an incredibly, incredibly long way in the UK. Yeah. I mean, when you look now at our parliament, we have lots of women in our cabinet. We have lots of women in parliament, lots of women in prominent roles right across society. So things have really, really changed. And, you know, the, the, the march towards uh, gender equality has gone very far. But there are still challenges. And I'm not going to sort of pretend that the UK has it perfectly. We still have a gender pay gap. So in many, many roles, uh, men are paid more than women for the same work. That's not right. That needs to change. We're working on it, but we've still got a journey to go. We still find at schools that people have very gendered concepts of what jobs are available and which aren't. So if you talk to girls, even as young as sort of five or six, and you say, you know, uh, pick, a, pick who is a racing car driver, and they're shown a picture of a man, or all, nearly all of them will pick the man because they don't see that as a job that, that, that they could do. So those attitudes are still there and still need to change. And we also still have problems with gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. We also find the media and the images that are portrayed around women are very different from men. The way the media talks about women politicians is very different to how they talk about male politicians. So there are still attitudes in our society that we need to work on and that we are working on. But, you know, we have come a very long way over the last 50 years. Yeah, yeah. So I can say no country is perfect in terms no, of absolutely. Empowerment. We have to work all together to address this issue. For Marisa, uh, how does the Google Takeover program help you shape your future career goals? Well, thank you. This is the big question as well because uh, this program can make me realize that uh, how tough or how hard the, and challenging the diploma life can be yeah. because first uh, when I come to this um, program I mentioned that diploma life is can be coming relaxing and just busy once in a while but in reality no I have, I have been to three meetings today and yeah. it's haven't end yet and it's more like uh, you don't really uh, work to the end of the day and it end it just continue and the circle is continue yeah. and revolve around uh, revolve around thing so um, for this program however i still excited because it really lead me or teach me about my future career as well that i want to do and i hope that i can achieve that um, as well thank yeah. you and mr williams do you want to see more good like marisa and what will you do more in order to have more girls like Marisa to come out and then really empower women? So yeah, I do want to see more girls like Marisa. And I mean, I always say when I talk about gender equality, there are three big reasons why we should have it. And this is why I want to see more girls like Marisa. The first is just it's right. You know, it's morally right. Men and women should have the same opportunity. So I believe that as a, as a value. Secondly, I think for a country like Cambodia, and in fact, you know, for the UK too, and any country, it's completely crazy not to use all of your people, all of your human resources. Why wouldn't you use to the full potential 50% of your population to exclude them from the economy, from prominent roles, just makes absolutely no sense when you're looking to grow your economy and create more prosperity for everybody. Yeah. And then the third reason is the very practical one that you know women have a different set of issues sometimes in society, they have different perspectives to men. So if you don't have women involved in decisions, you make bad decisions. And there have been endless examples of this, of where decision making has excluded, you know, research has been done by men and they haven't brought in the, the female perspective. And then you've ended up with a solution that isn't optimal. So I think for a kind of moral, uh, economic and practical reasons, we need more women like Marisa in, uh, in Cambodia. And what are we going to do to do it? Well, I mean, I think one of the things that we try and do is to, to hold up uh, women who are doing great things in Cambodia because there are so many. We do lots of things through the year to do that. Big supporters of the Women of the Future Awards and this yeah, year yeah. we've got 12 Cambodians which is the highest ever who've been shortlisted for these awards and this is a award across Southeast Asia that celebrates women doing amazing things in different sectors. So we put a lot of effort into supporting those women and showcasing what they're doing to inspire other girls. Uh, and we also you know, do programmatic work across the country to try and increase the opportunities for girls. We've got a big program uh, called the SAGE program, which is yeah. supporting um, girls in education. Uh, that's working here in Cambodia to try and help girls stay in education. And then we've got a range of like fantastic NGOs who are working at schools right across the country to make sure that girls have the same opportunities as boys. Yeah. It's really amazing how right now many Cambodian women are climbing up the step and really doing an amazing job. And for Marisa, what role do you want to see women and girls play in Cambodian society? 
Um, thank you for the question. Um, I want to see them in every role. <laughs> that is <Quite> short, right. <laughs> yes. Um, um, to be honest, uh, to see women in each role also give another young uh, girl uh, the role model of them as well. Not only from political to uh, entrepreneurs. So the girl will not limit themselves anymore. They will say, oh, if I want to join this role, see, this is my role model. Like, yeah. they have so uh, many women as their role model everywhere. So it's not a big deal for them. They said, oh, if she can achieve that, I can too. So this, they don't put the limit or pressure on themselves that, oh, they shouldn't move forward or stay back up like this. Yeah, yeah thank you. So you can and I can also. Yes. So do you have any message for the girls out there? Um, well, for me, as a young girl myself, I would have a few mistakes for them. The first thing is don't limit yourself. Uh, you can do great things. And second is you can do it. And another thing is uh, if you saw the another program that you really interesting in, uh, take a risk and apply for it. Uh, Please don't, uh, please don't just saw it and scroll past it, and you will regret in the future. Just take a rest. That's it. Because this is my slogan as well. I take a rest before become a regret. So yeah. yeah so that from my mistake from to all of them. Thank just you. Just go for a travel chance that opportunities. Yeah. Just uh, if you're interested in it, mm -hmm. then go for it. Yeah. And Mr. M Ambassador, any messages for the Cambodian girl or women? Yeah, so I mean, I, I mean, I echo what uh, Marisa has said, but I think believe in yourself, you know, yeah. believe in yourself. I've met Cambodian women and girls across this country who are amazing. So believe in yourselves, support each other, you know, form networks of women who support each other and hold each other up. Because when things get difficult and, you know, you might encounter challenges, having that network of women who can support you, have your back can be really, really powerful. And then the last thing I would just say, and I say this regularly, is that you know we haven't made the progress towards gender equality across the world that we have because men woke up one day and said, hey, let's share some of our power and some of our influence with women. We've achieved what we have because women have stood up and seized it. You know, they've taken the initiative, they've driven forward progress. It's women who've driven that progress, not men. So we need all of you, women in Cambodia, to keep pushing because that's how we'll get progress. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador you. and Marisa, for today. I know that you were very busy <laughs> today. The schedule is very tight, but you have done a great job. Yeah, thank you, thank so, you much. so much. Thank you.